start off this Frida Kahlo inspired look, I'm starting off with none other than my regular foundation. This is the same in every video and I place it on all the same places, which is my face and my neck. Then using the same products for my eyebrows, which is my MAC Concrete Eyeshadow and my Laura Mercier Gel Liner in black, only this time I'm giving my brows a much different shape to them because they need to be sort of a unibrow, sort of connected in the front. I still don't want to lose the arch though. This is going to be a little bit of a process where you're going to be drawing on little hairs after you lay down the base with your eyeshadow and thicken your brows and make them as thick and long and united as you want. So obviously this is not a very historically accurate look at all, so it's just a Frida inspired look, meaning you've got the unibrow and then you can do whatever you want with the rest of the face. So I'm going in with cream eyeshadow for the eyes and I'm going to create a halo eye, which is my favorite thing in the world, by placing some of that cream eyeshadow on the center of my lid and then circling it with another cream eyeshadow. So the lighter shimmery color goes in the center, the darker matte color goes and defines the inner and outer corner and the crease. And just to deepen that up, I'm going to use its powder counterpart. God, that is a mouthful. So I'm just dipping my brush in some purple from my Brights palette by NYX and I'm repeating the same motion. Whatever I've got the purple cream eyeshadow, I'm going over it with some actual powder eyeshadow. And you can deepen this up and even use a little bit of black if you want to. Just make sure you really blend it out very well. I'm also coating my waterline with the same gel liner and I'm in fact extending this line and making sort of a wing but based on the bottom outer corner rather than the top. Make sure you blend this out very well also. And then it's time for some mascara, just a basic coat of mascara on top and bottom. And then I'm going straight in with my concealing slash highlighting. Using just any concealer that you find convenient, as long as it's slightly brighter than your skin tone, just to achieve that highlighted effect. You're going to take it underneath the eyes, around the nose, on the cupid's bow, on the bridge of the nose if you wish, on the chin, and so on. So next I'm going in with some semi-spiky, quite full lashes. I'm just placing them on my natural lash line and creepy eyeball close-up because we need to tight line the top waterline as well. I'm going in and highlighting with the same concealer just underneath the brow and blending out like a pro with my finger or you could obviously use a brush if you wanted to which would be advisable. And let's go ahead and just chuck a bunch of bronzer all over our face. I'm doing it more in a contoury motion rather than a bronzing motion which would be on the top of the nose and the top of the cheeks so I'm actually adding a little bit of structure starting off with this and then moving on to my contouring from my palette so I picked the darkest shade because I want it to be quite dramatic and I'm chiseling that cheekbone you can also take it around the hairline underneath the jaw in the little dip above the cupid's bow, right underneath the lips, anywhere and everywhere that makes sense to you. With an orange eyeshadow, I'm continuing that contouring action all the way up to my temple and sort of as a blush, but not really. So this is what we generally don't wanna do, just have an orange contour. Well, this time I'm going for it. With a rosy eyeshadow from my Golden Hour palette, I'm going to go in and do my whole highlighting in terms of texture. So we have added brightness, but I'm also accentuating the cheekbones, the cupid's bow, the bridge of the nose, and so on. So a whole lot of shimmer up there. And if you find that the brow bone highlight interferes a little bit with the little hairs that you have drawn on, if you recreate this look exactly, that is, um, that's fine. You can always just go in and restore them or just use this smoky eye and just do your normal eyebrow. So moving on to the lips with the lip pencil that I forgot to show you on camera. So that is just a Barry M pencil. It is burgundy and I'm just shaping my whole entire lip with this. As I usually do, I like to overline, but I'm also bringing the color in the edges and blending it out with my finger. However, in order to fill in the lips, I'm not going to go in with regular lipstick, but instead with a cream eyeshadow. Now that is purely just because I like the pearlescent finish of this and it's a nice burgundy color, but by all means just use any sort of lipstick you have. Now after deepening up my contours a little bit more, I'm finally setting everything into place with a translucent powder and I'm coating my lashes in even more mascara. I want them to be ridiculously long because if Frida and I have one thing in common is that we're hairy. So that is it for the finished Frida Kahlo inspired look. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications because I've got lots of Halloween looks coming. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!